Hey guys, what's going on? Carl here from Sled Strength, uh, continuing on with our rugby preseason uh, video series. Today we're going to go over speed and agility training, uh, combine the two together for this one um, in the trial period. So we've already gone over uh, conditioning and strength uh, in the gym. So now we're going to go over how to structure, plan, and how what it should look like during the park trial period for your speed and agility training. So I've harped on about this before. Um, did a bit of a bigger video back a few months ago on speed development, but context, context, context. So the reason I've written it three times is context is king. So context is everything, particularly in this period. So it's all well and good to build up the general speed qualities, um, you know, speed uh, mechanics, top end speed, acceleration, uh, change of direction, uh, learning different steps to get back to acceleration and uh, change direction. It's all well and good to uh, learn those, but now we need to apply them to the context of rugby. Um, so this is where it really pays dividends to have a good communication channel with your um, coaches, so with your sport coaches, because uh, they know the most about the sport. So start to design drills around certain positions you may be on the field. So it could be out of a scrum, um, it could be during a, a play. So I like to bring the ball in a lot here. So with the outside backs, we're actually passing at speed or catching at speed, kicking at speed, accelerating after catching, anything like that. So you can get creative, but it's really got to apply contextually to the sport. Um, variable positions and routes. So that sort of ties into the next point as well. But so it's no longer straight line. It wasn't really in the last block either, but um, we want to put ourselves in difficult positions to accelerate and get to top speed and change direction out of, um, and also have external stimulus uh, force upon us. So that could be the pressure of a kick chase, could be the pressure of a player a few meters away from you or someone on top of you, anything like that. Um, and then in the actual drill itself, we're changing direction, whether reactive or not, we're changing, stopping, decelerating, um, you know, 180 turns, 90 degree turns, swerve on an angle, anything like that. You can get creative, but it's a very essential that you have this in this phase. Um, so reactive chaotic, sort of the similar as the last one, but um, majority of your reps, you can have your warm up that's very um, predictable in nature, but for our actual work, it needs to be reactive in nature. So, and also that's where it ties back to context reactive to the context of sports and rugby, um, to where the ball's going, to other players, to your own players, um, to the ruck, to the scrum, to a lineup, anything like that. Um, and chaotic, so really introducing it to games, try and shape games to make you hit high speed meters. Um, you know, you could have people coming in from different angles and you've got to react, anything like that, get creative. Uh, it's low volume, so nothing, I'd probably say drop the volume by 30% uh, from the last block at least and very high intensity. So our efforts want to be short and sharp. Um, so very high speed, really trying to hit those meters, but very low volume in nature. So anywhere from, let's say, 20 feet exposures a week, it's good to maintain. It all depends on what the work we've done in the off-season, the pre-season. Um, last one is sort of conditioning, but repeatability. So... Speed and agility, it's great to have a great top speed, be real agile, be able to change the direction. But you finally get taxed a lot when we do a lot of change of direction. So we sort of built a bit of capacity um, back in the pre-season more earlier on. Um, but repeatability, so that's where that repeat speed and the conditioning comes in. Thought I'd just drop it in here because it is a big part of it. You've got to be able to repeat those high speed meters. So having a block hit here and there where it's more of a capacity base but still high speed um, can really pay dividends later on this season. Hope that helped guys. Uh, got any questions, please do send them in. Always happy to help and answer your questions. That's what I'm here for. Have a good day.